Well, if you're a fan of big coupes in the American tradition, it's hard to ignore this one German automobile, and that is the Mercedes-Benz W126 SEC Coupe, sometimes known as the C126. It's just an absolutely gorgeous design done by Bruno Sacco and his team, and inspired a number of vehicles around the globe. It was introduced after the W126 sedan came out late in the 1979 model year. The coupe came out in the fall of 1981 and continued production through the fall of 1991. And while the W126 Mercedes certainly is an attractive vehicle, there actually was a Chevrolet that was produced that bears more than a passing resemblance to this W126 coupe, and that is the 1980s era Chevrolet Opala. The Opala, you say, you've never heard of the Chevrolet Opala. Well, that's because it was not produced in the United States. This 1980-81 to 81 Chevrolet Opala was a variant of a vehicle that was produced by General Motors' Brazil unit, GM do Brasil, for decades beginning in the late 60s and continuing on until the early 90s. More specifically, the Opala was based on a German Opel Record Series C vehicle and was launched in the Brazilian market for the 1969 model year and was produced until the 1992 model year. In fact, the name Opala is generally accepted to be a combination of Opel, the name of GM's German subsidiary, and Impala, the range-topping Chevrolet for many years in the United States. The Impala debuted for the 1969 model year after being introduced at the Sao Paulo Auto Show in November of 1968 and appearing on a rotating stage. And when the Opala was introduced, it had two conventional powertrains under hood that would certainly be familiar to U.S. buyers. The first was a 153 cubic inch 2.5 liter four-cylinder that came straight from the Chevy 2 and was introduced in 1962 in the United States. The second engine was a 230 cubic inch inline six-cylinder that debuted in the 1963 Chevrolet Impala. For the 1971 model year, the 3.8 liter inline six cylinder was replaced by a larger 4.1 liter 250 cubic inch engine. And interestingly, in 1973, GM do Brazil's engineers changed the bore and stroke dimensions of the four cylinder to have a four inch bore with a three inch stroke. This would interestingly be the same bore and stroke as Pontiac's Iron Duke engine that would be introduced in the late 1970s, although the engines were completely different. In fact, and this may prove humorous to some, the Iron Duke's design was based on this Brazilian four-cylinder engine with the four-inch bore and three-inch stroke. That bore and stroke had been changed because GM do Brazil engineers thought that a shorter stroke engine would produce less vibrations than one with a longer stroke in a four-cylinder, and they weren't entirely incorrect. Unfortunately, however, the Iron Duke was never known as an overly refined four-cylinder engine in the United States and often had a reputation as a teeth shaker when you were driving it. In any event, the Opala proved quite popular in the Brazilian market, and by 1980 it was time for a restyling, so the vehicle bore less than its original resemblance to the Opal record from which it was derived. By this point, all vehicles sold in the Brazilian market had to have square headlights, so the front end of the Opala bore this look that was something that was seen on other cars in Brazil. However, the Opala was also now becoming the only entry in its class, as Ford sunset the Brazilian Maverick in 1978 and Chrysler would sunset its Dart in 1981. There was still a Galaxy Landau that would continue on until 1982, but after that, the Opala really had its market unto itself. Recognizing that it had the luxury large vehicle market nearly all to itself, Chevrolet started introducing a number of trim variants to the Opala that were more luxurious, including the Commodoro and the Diplomatia, both of which were names derived from Opals. The Opalas, particularly those from 1980 to 1981, at least in my mind, are some of the most beautiful Chevrolets ever produced, and certainly some of the best-looking cars produced by Brazilian units of the Big Three. Interestingly, you can see on this particular Opala that it's outfitted with lower body cladding, similar to the Mercedes W126 SEC Coupe. So there was, again, more than a passing resemblance between these vehicles. And in fact, this particular vehicle that's shown is the top-of-the-line Opala for the 1988 model year, the Opala Diplomatia, 
hence the cool body side cladding and overall good looks of the vehicle. And as we turn to the rear three-quarter view, you can see again this resemblance to the Mercedes W126 Coupe and the Opala Coupe, although the Opala does have a bit less height to the overall deck lid, and the body side line kicks up at the C-pillar, similar to the Coke bottle shape seen on a number of American cars from the 1960s, although this isn't truly total Coke bottle styling because the body doesn't swell around the rear wheels like it does on other Coke bottle shaped vehicles. Turning to the inside of this 1980 Opala interior, you can see that it was relatively luxurious for the time. And you have to remember that this is a Brazilian market car. It's not a U.S. Cadillac vehicle. But you can see the cloth seats have a really nice velour nap to them. The door panels, while somewhat plain, do have some embellishing elements and stainless slash chrome trim. And it has a really nice, easy-to-read gauge package in the instrument panel and a funky two-spoke steering wheel that, at least for me, reminds me of the steering wheel that was launched in the Chevrolet Corsica of the 1980s. Not sure if this was the inspiration for that or not. Probably not, but it at least reminded me of that. Here's a zoomed out look at the interior, and you can see the seats are kind of these high back bucket style designs with integral headrests. They're very thin so that the passengers had good room in the rear of the vehicle. And from what I understand, they are still quite comfortable for the driver and the passenger. And while we've been talking about the Opala Coupe, they did also have an Opala sedan that was similarly handsome. You can see the sedan here. Yes, it's the same color as the Coupe, but notice this does have four doors. Very prominent and conservatively styled front end, but I believe the overall shape of the vehicle is quite handsome and tasteful. And here's the rear three-quarter of the same Opala sedan. Notice the beautiful feature line coming from the top of the roof down the sail panel that mates up with the feature line on the body side. I just think it's a great overall line in this car. It does have a pretty glassy greenhouse and tall upper. It would look a little bit better if that upper were chopped a bit, similar to the coupe, but still a pretty handsome sedan and very modern style wheels on these vehicles. And in case you're wondering, here's a picture of the 4.1 liter, 250 cubic inch inline six that was under the hood of many of these vehicles. Notice also that the hood opens in a European style reverse way as opposed to the traditional American style. But those Chevy fans will recognize this engine and the valve covers as being something that they have seen in the United States. Overall, the Brazilian Chevrolet Opala was just one awesome Chevrolet, both in looks as well as performance, at least relative for the time. Let me know what you think about it, particularly the American viewers, if you like this Brazilian Chevrolet Opala. And for the Brazilian viewers, share a story if you or your family owned an Opala. Thanks again for watching this feature on the Brazilian Chevy Opala. If you enjoyed it, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Check out the video thumbnails at bottom left and right for some suggestions for you.